I've got a small take on it, and I think it is an important thing to 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 think about. Which is uh, this last week, uh, OpenAI has now debuted a new Chat GPT subscription, surprising exactly no one after their enterprise sort of rollout. Uh, but it's aimed at smaller teams. Uh, so OpenAI says TechCrunch uh, is launching a new subscription plan for ChatGPT. It's viral AI-powered chatbot aimed at smaller self-service-oriented teams. Aptly called ChatGPT Team, uh, much to Joe's dismay. Oh, uh, no. I know. I know. The plan provides a dedicated workspace for teams up to 149 people. I love the fact that it's so specific. Um, 100, you know, no, don't bring that 150th person in here. Just, just, wouldn't just that be sad? Out. I'm sorry. You're 150. You're out. Yeah. I'm, you're out. You have, but I'm recording people, it, but I'm going to record yeah. it while they out me on that one. <laughs> exactly. Uh, using chat GPT as well as admin tools for team management. All users in a ChatGPT team gain access to OpenAI's latest models, which is ChatGPT4, of course, generating text, uh, GPT4 with vision, uh, which understands images, and of course, DALI, which creates those images, plus the tools to allow ChatGPT to analyze, edit, and extract information from uploaded files. That's probably the biggest uh, change there, which is which is which is critical. Um, I will tell you uh, to getting real value is being able to upload your own stuff. And of course, like the enterprise version and other tools as well, it lets you not opt out of having the documents that you and the knowledge that you upload get to be part of the general learning model. So you yeah. can sort of get your own sort of isolated thing there. Pretty cheap, $30 per user per month or $25 per user per month build annually. Uh, which is higher than ChatGPT Plus, but you get all those team-oriented benefits, um, and uh, et cetera, et cetera. So, uh, do you have any? I have a quick take on this, but I, I would love your take if you have one. No, go go ahead. I want to hear your take. So, it, I think this is um, continuing down. I have long thought that the the biggest impediment to all of these. I mean, you know, you can't throw a rock these days and not hit a new AI generative AI startup that does exactly this, right? Whether they use their own learning model um, and LLM, you know, a la a company like Writer, um, which is a fantastic company, by the way, I'm, I'm a big fan of what they're doing, uh, to, you know, Jasper, to, you know, all of the ones that are out there, Notion and copy.ai and you know, all of these that are focused on small teams or big teams in some cases that use some element of either ChatGPT or their own learning model to sort of segment off of businesses and let them do these things across a multifunctional or multi-member uh, team and upload enterprise things and keep that all separate and make it, you know, make it your own kind of thing. I've long thought that the biggest threat was going to be OpenAI getting into this business, basically becoming the Microsoft uh, OS of uh, the the uh, the AI spectrum, and this is just another you know this is them becoming you know m you know there's the <laughs> they have Salesforce over here kind of model, and then they now have the HubSpot kind of model, which is you know we've got it for the enterprise where we can sell it big you know enterprise level services, and of course now we have the small business model uh, which can actually help that. So I think it's really this is really a long term big wave that may end up, you know, sort of taking out a lot of these new startups. Uh, and we'll see how the startup community evolves to, to meet this challenge. Um, they're going to have to start, you know, building features fast and furious uh, and selling fast and furious. And that's the interesting thing that we're noticing with all of our clients is businesses still aren't acquiring tools yet they're still just playing around so there's this really interesting tension right now with a speed to market like being able to offer up all these features and all these things that you can do as a small ai generative ai company the fact that the market is pretty soft right now for companies that are committing to big enterprise deals and then sort of the invention or innovation that's happening at big companies like an open ai uh, where they're going to be offering these small business tools to sort of disrupt the the marketplace. And I think it's it's going to shake out here in the first half of 24. And I think we're going to see a lot of these smaller companies sort of gets, um, you know, get swamped by these big waves. Yeah, I mean, they, they're so smart at moving at the speed that they're moving. And now that they had the the new board, if you will, at OpenAI, yeah. it's probably a little 
uh, more forgiving on the aggressiveness of Sam Altman. Yeah. Um, open AI has nothing in front of them to stop them from just dominating this. Uh, and and so you're, they're, they're going to become, you know, if you looked at the, you know, if you look at the stock market, they call it like the, 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 the significant seven or companies or fab used to be fab five. And, you know, and you added Netflix and Nvidia and whatever open AI joins that list of Google and Microsoft and whatnot. Yep. Um, yeah. As, as, as this thing gets crazy. And I think that, you know, valuations aren't going to get any higher. You're not going to see anything like that, but it, you're, you're going to see, I think by the end of the year, some pretty scary stuff. <laughs> Yeah, well, I think once it's, we I think get you through, are. once we get through the election and stuff with with just AI in general, but everybody's looking at this now that we see it every day, and we're like, okay, well, how can I use this in my business? Well, to there's an point, interesting sentiment. Yeah, there's an interesting sentiment going on right now. I find, which is there seems to be a bit of a of a bifurcation happening, right? Uh, and what I mean by that is that I'm seeing a lot less. And a lot of this is quite honestly due to the sort of eh, meh quality of imagery and text and original content that's generated by AI. I mean, I'm just seeing a lot of people that are unimpressed with, with you know, and, and a lot of the writers that were initially like super freaked out about, you know, open AI or, or chat GPT and the ability for generative AI to generate original content are kind of going, kind of going, Okay, it's not it's it's okay. We're going to be fine, right? Writers are going to be fine, you know, image designers, we're going to be fine, right? There's there's just a lot of weakness right now in that. And and that may be on purpose a little bit to sort of because what I'm seeing is is sort of the fear because that fear, that sort of general overarching sort of oh my god, AI is going to become Skynet and, you know, take over the world and do all that. I I don't see that as much anymore. I don't see a lot of fire being lit underneath these companies right now in terms of uh, in terms of those things there's still a lot of concern about ip and copyright and those kinds of things sure. that'll sort itself out but i don't see a lot of the fear anymore where i see the fear moving that energy of the fear moving is in the deep fakes is in the sort of that that sort of uh element which of course businesses really aren't leveraging that much um yet um, but the, the, the sort of fear I see is exactly what you're saying, right? Bad actors doing things with AI, like making politicians say things or, you know, creating imagery, you know, from the war or, you know, that all of those kinds of that misinformation seems to be where the big fear is right now. Yeah. What, what, what is, everyone will have their own truth and AI is, is not adding, right. <laughs> adding to this That's in a right. positive way. Um, which itself it's lends itself to more human oriented content, right? Differentiating by the fact that you're creating human oriented content. So it, it's, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's funny. I, um, did you listen to the, the decoder podcast uh, that they, they threw on Galloway's stream about, I did uh, not. Or, yeah. Ba basically it was like, it talked about the downfall of Twitter and it said, you know, is it Trump's fault? Is it Elon's fault? And basically when you listen to it, you, you get to the point where it's, it was management's, it's Twitter's fault. It was Dor started with Dorsey. They just couldn't make a, a decision about anything. But the, yeah. the whole the whole thing is tied to everyone has their own little truth. And that's the problem. There's nowhere to go for who's, and, and of course, we've talked about this forever. But I think that's what we're in for. AI being central to this, oh my God, where, where you're going to have your own truth. I'm going to have my own. Everybody's got their own truth. Yep, and it's going to get really nuts as to what should it's going to get nuts in, in here. Twenty four.